Fadi Hall. All right, so today we're going to talk about another、um, very important concept. Okay, we call it the Yi Xie Lian Quan. Okay, so what does that mean? It means using weapons to train the fist. Okay, so most of the, from my understanding, you know, people who practice martial art, they're basically separated into two sides. One side believes that you must start from basics, the the fist, the physical, just the body. With your arms, your legs first, your structure. Once you train that, then you you're allowed to train、uh, weapons. And you have the other side who believes that, oh,、uh, everything evolved from weapons. So, so all Chinese martial art evolved from some sort of weapons.、Uh, a saber for for pi gua, you know, a saber for Wing Chun. Ba ji xing yi came from da qiang. Okay, so you might as well practice、uh, weapon first. So there are these two sides of people. Right, so、um, to me, I believe in. I'm on the early,、uh, you know, the former side. You know, I, I believe that no matter what you do, you need、um, you need some basics, right? <clears throat>、um, but I think as I practice、uh, for longer、uh, into martial art and、uh, spending more time, you know, playing with weapons and and stuff like that, I'm starting to believe that. I have a new thinking.、Uh, I'm starting to believe that、um, weapons and and、uh, and fists, you know, we call it chuan, lian chuan, right? So, which is the the physical form,、uh, bare hand, empty hands. So, weapons and empty hand practice should go hand in hand. They should coexist. But if you really compare what comes first, it would be empty hand because you need the structure, you need the stance, you need some basic power, power generation. Uh, mechanics. You need to develop that first. But then, I don't think a weapon introduction should be、uh, coming in so late. Okay, I, I think actually having weapon introducing weapon practice in an earlier stage、uh, helps. Okay,、uh, why? There are several points.、Um, number one, we have hands. Right, we have limbs. We have hands. We have fingers. We have skin, okay, that can feel. We have fingers that can grab.、Uh, our our arms and and arms and and、uh, hands and fingers are very flexible.、Um, at will, we can grab onto something. We can touch on. We can feel the opponent. We can grab. We can punch. And sometimes we, for advanced、uh, martial art, we have to teach the student to feel, to ting, to listen. Okay, ting jin. And in order to listen, you have to fang song. You have to relax, and then you have to stick. Okay, in order to to stick,、um, you have to fang song. You have to relax. You have to follow. Right. So there are all these advanced concepts. Like a lot of times, it is very quite difficult for for student to to capture in the beginning. But however, when you practice weapons such as、uh, a jin, okay, or a a spear, you kind of Force to feel、um, through this extension、uh, of your body. Oftentimes we say, "Okay, a weapon is an extension of your body."、Uh, what does that mean? It means that okay, now you have your arm. This is flesh and bone. I can feel everything that that touches. I can I can I have the sensitivity.、Uh, I have fingers to to poke, to grab, to punch. I have a palm. But with a weapon, weapon is a is an object. Okay, it doesn't have skin.、Uh, it doesn't have very advanced technology, nanotechnology that's plugged into your head that you can feel what the weapon is is、uh, is touching. So, in another words, that when you're holding a weapon, when you're holding a weapon, a chin, for example, okay, your feeling has to. Extend into this object, and this object is dead. It's just an object, but you need to feel, right? So, in a way, through training, this is a good way to train a beginner, forcing the person to to feel the touch through an object. Okay, so obviously, something that touches the sword, sword tip, is different from something that touches your finger, right? But you have to enhance that sensitivity to feel through an object. 
Okay. And then not just through feeling, you have to stick. Okay. So when someone uh, attack on this side, I need to parry, right? So when I parry, it kind of stick to the sword. And when I say stick to the sword, you just keep, keep the, the two objects uh, attached and then you deliver an attack um, in return. So through weapon practice, uh, a lot of times you can enhance that sort of uh, requirement. Uh, and, and in a lot of ways, it, it's kind of a shortcut. Uh, Daqiang, for example, Daqiang is heavy. It's a heavy weapon. Um, so sometimes having that sort of weight on top of your body, immediately you feel like, okay, I need to use my legs, especially for uh, more petite size uh, people, practitioners. And you hold this weapon, you have to use your legs, your whole body to drive the weapon. But that is only because this person, this practitioner is already at a level where he can utilize his body. He knows how to utilize his body instead of his arms. If you take someone who has, you know, previously did a bunch of weight training and he has very uh, uh, bulky muscles, and when he holds a da chang, obviously he's gonna immediately rely on his arms because that's the most natural <clears throat> to him and it's easier. So there is a, a, a level of training, a foundation training that needs to be applied uh, to train the person to know how to utilize the whole body. Then when you apply this weapon onto weapon training to this practitioner, uh, it can speed up uh, a lot of the sensitivities. Um, when you have this weight, all of a sudden, instead of punching in the air, now you have to utilize the body to, to really hold this heavy weapon. Uh, even a smaller regular size, a seven foot spear, okay, when you thrust that spear, you would feel that, okay, so this is the same as a punch, okay? And because of the, the shape of a spear is a really long stick, and you can visually very easily see this, you almost see the power going out. So instead of punching, okay, some people will punch here, some people will punch this, but some people punch like this. We see a lot of people punch like this, okay? Uh, so, but when you have a spear, immediately you get it, okay? So that punch becomes straight, and that stick, that spear in front of that you're holding becomes, you're almost visualizing how that power goes in the straight line. So these are like examples of, um, of how weapon can enhance fist training, okay? And uh, saber, right? So saber only have, when you use your hand, you just cut, you know, pigua, for example, or, or just a, a p. You get it, but you don't get it fully. But until you use a, a short knife or saber, then you get, oh, this is the sharp side. And there's a dull side on the side that way you can, you can block. Okay, so sometimes you, you, you learn uh, more techniques uh, uh, by training and weapons. So, yeah, so basically uh, that's my point, is that you know, uh, sometimes uh, touching a weapon or, or learning a weapon can really enhance an understanding or speed up the understanding of, um, of a fist training, okay? Um, one don't have to train bare hand, empty handed for many, many years before this person can touch, before he should touch, uh, uh, play with weapons. Yeah, so the concept of yi xie lian quan is, uh, I believe it's a, it's a new concept and I think it should be, uh, be applied. And I know some of these uh, uh, younger uh, sifu or masters coaches are starting to you know, apply uh, this concept of yi xie lian quan. Okay, that's it. See you guys.